Would you take your phone underwater? And I don't mean these cases that you take in the pool with you that are really flimsy. I mean underwater, like 10, 20, 30 meters deep. Because that's what I did. You may have seen on my TikTok or Instagram, I've got a lot of underwater videos. And yep, all of them were taken on my iPhone. Before I went to the Maldives, I was trying to research the best camera case that I could get for my phone, but on a budget. Realistically, I would have loved some underwater housing for my camera, but for thousands, not a chance. I'm not made of money. After all the looking and hours of researching, I stumbled upon the Sea Life Sports Diver case, which is housing for your phone. Today, I'll go through the features of this underwater case and how I got these amazing photos and videos and how you can too. Now, I upgraded to the iPhone 14 Pro, the one that I'm filming on now, just before I went to the Maldives because I wanted enough memory and I wanted to have a really good camera that I can re get really good photos and videos from. I use my phone so much more than my DSLR these days, so I thought it was worth the investment. And this is the phone that I use my Sea Life Sports Diver housing. The Sea Life Sports Diver can house a lot of the newer makes and models of phones, especially the iPhones. And it's also controlled by Bluetooth and powered by the Sea Life Sports Diver app. The housing is waterproof to up to 40 meters or 130 feet. Most of you won't be diving deeper than this considering 40 meters is the limit for recreational diving. So this case is sturdy and secure for all types of dives. I've used my Sea Life Sports Diver housing 15 times now. 12 of those were dives that I was diving up to 30 meters in depth or 100 feet. And I love everything about this case. I felt really comfortable having my iPhone in it, especially that deep because it's really, really sturdy and secure. And so far, I have not had any problems with it. Let me show you how to get your phone inside one of these things. So here's the Sea Life Sport Diver housing. The housing and its bits and bobs come in this hard zip case which protects it. So this is what the housing looks like. It comes with a strap that you can attach, which I definitely recommend. Now let's take a look at the accessories that come with it. We have a vacuum pump, which I'll show you how to use later. This takes the air out of the case to pressurize it. These are rubber tabs to put inside the housing. These keep your phone secured in position and you can add or take away tabs depending on the model of phone you have. You'll have a spare housing o-ring which goes around the case inside to keep it watertight. I'll show you the one inside the case in a second. There will be a small bottle of lubricant which is used on the o-rings to help them stay watertight when in use. You need to make sure you apply this before every dive to make sure the seal is secure. You'll only need a tiny bit. You'll also get this little device to help remove the o-rings when you need to reapply lubricant or replace the o-rings. Then you have the manual, which I definitely recommend reading all the way through so you know how the housing works and how you can take care of it. I'll flip it round to the front, this is where your phone's camera lens will sit. Attached to the lens is a red filter that comes with the housing, this just clips on and off the front. This is really useful when diving deep underwater where the light can't penetrate as far, which makes the colours of the fish in the coral disappear, so this helps bring the colours back into the camera. The buttons on the side are what you control your phone with when it's inside the housing once it's connected via Bluetooth. You have a menu button which toggles your phone through camera mode, video mode, settings and the playback mode. This part on top is the vacuum port, where you'll need to pressurise the housing before taking it underwater. This is so it remains watertight and could withstand the pressure when meat is underwater. You simply unscrew this to pump the air out of it with the pump provided and screw it back on when you're done. This is the o-ring around the valve that you'll need to lube up before every dive. And this is how you'd use the o-ring remover in case you need to take it off. Let's open up the housing. You'll do this by pressing the button on the side of the housing and rotating the, I'll just call it a handle, and then the case opens up. This is what the housing looks like from the inside. You'll have that little purple vial which is called a moisture muncher, which will remove any moisture from the housing. You'll have the housing switch at the bottom here. When you switch it on, these lights will appear and you know that it's powered up. The housing is powered by two AAA batteries which are behind this little door. You can replace these when the housing is running low on battery. Remember when I mentioned the rubber tabs? These are where they should go. I think I'm missing a couple but I'll add them later and this keeps your phone nice and secure inside the case. Okay so before you put your phone in the housing you need to make sure the housing is switched on then you need to head over to the Sport Diver app. Head over to your app store and type in Sport Diver. 
The red app with a shark on it should pop up. This is the right one, so click download. You'll then need to head to your Bluetooth settings to connect with the housing. Mine's done it automatically. Open the app and accept all the buttons which give the app access to your camera and photo library. Once you have the app open, carefully slot your phone inside the housing. Because the housing is powered up, it should connect and show this screen, which tells you to prep the housing for a dive. It'll also show you how full both your phone and the housing batteries are. The housing battery does last ages, it's only gone down one bar since I started using the housing. You need to make sure to clean all the lenses inside and out, lube the o-rings and make sure the moisture muncher is in place. Then you need to unscrew the valve and pump air out of it. You do this until the little dial on the screen hits the green bit. Don't pump too much because this will wreck the pressurisation. Then the case will start a countdown in which it monitors if the housing is airtight. You can't use the housing until this is done successfully. If there's a leak before the countdown has finished, an alarm will go off and you'll have to restart again. Make sure the o-rings are lubricated and the housing is in a good condition to be airtight before starting again. Once the countdown is complete, you're good to go. Once you're finished with your dive, you'll need to rinse the housing thoroughly before removing your phone. Submerge the housing in fresh water and press the buttons at least 20 times each to ensure all the seawater is flushed from these areas. Once rinsed and clean, you'll need to unscrew the valve. The little yellow plug inside is what keeps it airtight. You need to carefully push this to one side to release the pressure. Your housing will start to flash as if it's detected a leak, which is fine. You can then open the housing, remove your phone and switch off the housing. And that's how you use the Sea Life Sport Diver housing. So now you've seen how the Sea Life Sports Diver works, let me show you some of the footage that I managed to get underwater. <laughs> I was in shock too. When I saw my photos and videos for the first time when I got my phone out the case, my jaw was on the floor. I couldn't believe how good the quality was, that deep and in a case like that. Another plus side for me with the Sea Life Sports Diver case, when comparing it with say a GoPro for example, it's so much better because your photos and videos are already on your phone. As soon as you get your phone out the case, you can access them. Now you don't have to faff with trying to download the media from say the GoPro app. Um, it just it's so easy and especially for me someone that creates content all the time If I want to just upload a reel as soon as I've finished a dive I can do that and I can just send stuff to friends and family straight away as well I do find the GoPro app a little bit faffy So I prefer this so much better and of course there's really cool accessories that you can buy for the sea life sports diver as well Including ultra wide angle lenses lighting like the sea life sea dragon torches and even just the grip so you can stabilize your camera better So all in all it's a five star from me Let me know in the comments if you're considering buying an underwater camera or phone case And if this video has helped you narrow down that decision And as always all the products accessories and the information are down below in the description So you can go check those out yourself Thanks so much for watching. I will see you in my next video